understand when it comes to WWE and wrestling in general, everyone has an opinion, whether it's right or wrong. I understand that. But some of you, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way because I don't want backlash and I don't want to come off sounding some kind of way. Some of you are really clueless, man. Like, seriously. I was at the supermarket today and I had 11 items. I go to the line that says 12 items or less because I want to pay for my shit and get the fuck out of there so I can get home after a long day of work. The lady in front of me, I swear on everything that I possess, had at least 26 bottles of seltzer and random other shit, which in total was about 50 items. And then she, she speaks to the fucking register woman. Oh, I didn't know it was 12 items or less. I'm sitting there, I'm fucking taking a picture, I'm tweeting it out. This is the result of my shitty day. I'm looking at this woman, and I'm saying to myself, how some of these people are allowed out of their homes and into the general public. I don't know. And then I watch Monday Night Raw, and I see the tweets come at me. Some from people who follow me, and some from people who are not following me. This mostly has to do with the people who are not following me. But the people who are following me, some of you are completely fucking warped. Some of you have absolutely no business talking about WWE. It was me, date back to the Monday Night Raw, following the Raw After Mania. I was very high on that show. Simplistic booking, everything lined up and it made sense. AJ Styles was crowned the number one contender. We had Sami Zayn do his thing. Everything lined up. And then it continued on into the next week. Simple booking. I don't understand how some of you come at me and are criticizing me for not liking this show. I don't want to come on here and be negative, man. I made podcasts and I made reviews. WWE has hit a stride in which they're putting on decent fucking television. A winning streak. A small one. But it's a winning streak. Seems like WWE wanted to put their worst foot forward tonight after WWE payback. What happened to the new era? I don't know. There's no signs of it to me. I don't know about you guys. It might be a new era to some of the fucking idiots out there who actually enjoyed this show. But to me, as far as what I see, it's the goon era. This show fucking sucked. For a pay-per-view, Monday Night Raw following a pay-per-view, this show was fucking terrible. For the first hour, we got nothing but fucking bottom-of-the-barrel garbage. And then the rest of the show, I made a video on Twitter. I had to pop open a fucking energy drink to stay awake. And this is why I'm all amped up right now. I don't understand how some of you come at me and question the things that I say. Some of you don't belong watching fucking WWE, period. Just like the fucking woman I ran into at Stop and Shop today with fucking 67 items in a 12 items or less line. How you are allowed to be out in public and on social media is fucking mind-boggling to me. Not all of you. Some of you. Thank God for the fucking mute button. Now, I don't know what we just seen in the main event. I don't know what the fuck we just seen in the main event. It looked like to me, and 
I threw this out there in December when things were being talked about with the Bullet Club coming to the WWE. I talked about it in the first couple weeks of January before he made his debut. AJ Styles should have came in as a heel. That obviously did not happen. Seemed to me tonight like the WWE was testing the waters with AJ Styles being a heel. But when you put him against Roman Reigns, obviously he's going to be cheered. So I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, AJ Styles looked damn good standing next to Gallows and Anderson. And thank God, someone in wardrobe changed Gallows' outfit from the fucking shorts to the pants. Very, very good move, I must say. But them as a unit, they look fucking great together, as they should. Because they came in as a unit. Well, they didn't come in as a unit. They all migrated to WWE as a unit. Now we're seeing them as a unit on WWE television. I would like to see that state together. Because that original idea was the best idea. AJ Styles and the Bullet Club should really be manhandling Roman Reigns and the WWE. The Bullet Club needs to take the WWE by its fucking balls and squeeze. I hated the fact that AJ Styles did not attack Roman Reigns. I hated that. I cringed when I didn't see that. What is the fucking second guessing here, bro? You're fighting for a WWE championship. This man has fucking antagonized you for weeks now. And you have your boys standing next to you, pressuring you. Do it. Do it. The reaction would have been, cheers. So be it. Jim Ross reported, just as of this week, heels and faces, WWE is pretending as if that does not exist anymore. So if they don't care, nobody's going to care. We're going to cheer and boo whoever the fuck we want. AJ Styles should have attacked Roman Reigns when he was handed the chair. They should have destroyed the Usos. They should have fucking took out the Usos and fucking just... That's it for them. No more. Roman Reigns, all alone, attacked and mauled and maimed, destroyed by the Bullet Club. That's how Monday Night Raw should have ended. Roman Reigns coming back. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. He doesn't know what to do the next week and the following week after that and then going into Extreme Rules. How does he handle three men? Three men who have brutalized him and his family. You hire Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. The door is open. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. God forbid two Roman Reigns. Jesus fucking Christ. We can barely handle one Roman Reigns. Reigns, Ambrose, Rollins. There you go. There you go. The way this ended, I don't know what, I, don't, I honestly don't know what WWE is doing. And I've stated, I don't want to know. I'm glad they didn't debut Finn Balor on this show. It would have been a complete disrespectful slap in the face to Finn Balor if they debuted him on this fucking piece of shit show with this crowd. Put St. Louis on the fucking map as for a city not to book Monday Night Raw in because they were fucking awful. I don't know whether they fucking had beds or chairs in the crowd. Because half of them were fucking sleeping. If not all were sleeping. If they put me to sleep at home, I'm pretty sure they put half of the fucking audience in attendance to sleep. The new era though, right? The goon era. Remember that. So I don't know what they're doing with AJ Styles. I don't know what they're doing with the Bullet Club. But, uh... Listen... Again, AJ Styles taken out, the Bullet Club taken out. There'll be some fucking goon out there. Oh, they're destroying the Bullet Club's credibility. They're feeding AJ Styles to Roman Reigns. Joe said it best. Joe said it best. They're feeding Roman Reigns the indie guy. He's a TNA guy. He's an indie guy. You think WWE's going to allow an outsider over their golden boy? I doubt it. I don't think AJ Styles is going to win the title. I never thought he was going to win the fucking title. I want him to look good. I don't want him to look like a chump. I don't want him to be fed completely to Roman Reigns. 
I want him to at least put up a fight. I want the story to make sense. I want him to come out of this looking good. You can make Roman look good, but I want you to look good too. I don't know where they're going with this. The visual at the end of the show, probably the best thing of the night. And it really, you know, it really raised my eyes a little bit. It awoke me from a fucking deep sleep. Roman Reigns powerbomb on AJ Styles. And it wasn't just a traditional powerbomb where he lifted him and just fucking slammed him. He fucking vaulted him on the announce desk. And it crumbled and it broke. And it sounded in a way like I never heard those tables break before. And it was a very, very good spot. It was a good visual. But again, some of you are going to not like that. And some of you are going to be pleased with what you've seen. So, I don't know, man. Everybody's 50-50 on this. All we can say, and I'm sure everyone is in agreement here, we want this to be a story that makes sense and that has a great conclusion. We're in the beginning stages of this fucking feud right now. I don't know where they're going with it. It just seems... All, it seems up and down. It seems very chaotic. I feel like WWE doesn't know what they're doing. I'm here for the ride, though. I'm here for the ride. And I'm glad I don't know what's going on because they're keeping me guessing, man. They got everybody fucking guessing. But it did look like to me tonight that they were trying to test the waters with AJ Styles in a heel role. And I would not mind seeing that. I would not mind seeing that at all, man. My original idea was, even though I think he plays a better heel, Roman would have been aligned with Rollins returning from injury and Ambrose, who's doing nothing at the fucking moment, but feuding with a fucking potted plant and Chris Jericho. He would have been over as a face by default because those two guys are baby faces. And if you want to make AJ and the Bullet Club heels, listen, I'm all for that, man. I'm all for it. But I don't know what WWE is doing. I don't know how they're handling AJ Styles. I don't think WWE considers Roman Reigns a heel. I don't even know if they consider him a fucking face. They want to pretend and they want to believe he's a face by altering signs on the fucking website. You hear, you hear this story? WWE altering fan signs in a still shot of AJ jumping off the fucking ring apron trying to deliver that that uh, phenomenal forearm to Roman Reigns as he went through the announce table. There was a fucking sign. When, it, when it's boredom, it rains or some shit like that. Or when it rains, it bores is what it said. But on the WWE website, they, they blanked out professionally. It was fucking professionally done. When it, bo uh, when it rains is all, is all it says. When it rains and they blanked out, it bores. Unbelievable on WWE. Altering fan signs. If I was that fan, I'd be pissed seeing that on the website. I'd call into the headquarters. I'd fucking write emails. You're altering my signs for what? My free speech to bring a sign to the crowd has been altered because you don't approve of it because it's not what you want for Roman Reigns. Give me a fucking break. Give me a break. This is the length WWE is going to to get this man in the eyes of everybody as the fucking face of the company. Nobody fucking wants him. If that is any indication, give me a fucking break here, bro. Altering signs, altering crowd volume. It's all heard. It's all seen by everybody. Stop being blind to the fact that this man is a fucking failure. He has glimpses of fucking promise every now and then. But when WWE does this type of shit, it's tough to back someone like Roman Reigns. If WWE is going to this length, why would we ever back the company and their pick for number one in the company? He's a manufactured choice by the higher-ups. And those people will do whatever it fucking takes to make sure in the eyes of the people he stays that way. And when we, when we see shit like this, 
This is why you get the reaction that you're seeing on Monday Night Raw and at pay-per-views. People will revolt. You can't be doing that. You can't be altering signs. You can't be taking away signs in the crowd. People pay money to fucking sit there, which was, I'm sure, an expensive seat at a fucking pay-per-view, to have a sign and get his sign on TV to give that guy some satisfaction, and then it's taken away. I don't know, man. I really don't know what's going on with, uh, with everything. I, you know, in the end of it all, in the end of it all, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. This Raw sucked. That's all you gotta fucking know. This Raw was awful. But the closing segment, probably the best night, or the best part of the night, AJ going through a table, Roman Reigns vaulting him in the air, and landing through the announce table, and that was it. Where we go from here, I don't know. I don't know, man. St. Louis, wake the fuck up. Scott Trade Center. Like I said, add St. Louis to the fucking list of cities not to hold a Monday Night Raw in because this crowd was fucking terrible. Stephanie McMahon opens the show with Shane McMahon. Before you know it, you got fucking Cesaro out and you got Kevin Owens out. He appeals to Stephanie's uh, business sense and mentions having a contractual obligated rematch for the Intercontinental Championship. This brings out Cesaro to say that Owens and Zayn cost him the Intercontinental title match, and Shane makes a number one contenders match to open the show. Now, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but the Intercontinental Championship to open the show, I'm not for it. It's a lukewarm feud, especially with The Miz and Cesaro. You add Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, now you're spicing things up a bit to pique a lot of people's interests. But, I mean, to start the show off with the Intercontinental Championship when you got the drama of Roman Reigns and the Bullet Club and the Usos and AJ Styles and... Why isn't, why isn't that opening the show? That's what you ended off pay, a payback with. The last visual we seen was Vince McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, and Shane McMahon talking about Reigns and AJ Styles. Why wasn't that brought up to fucking start the show? Illogical fucking booking by WWE. Cesaro versus Owens. Nothing special here. If you've seen these two guys fight before in the past, you didn't miss anything. Same shit. Miz and Maurice were on commentary. Miz is actually better than fucking both JBL and Byron Saxton. Get them out and put Miz part-time with Michael Cole. Maybe it'll be a lot better. Cesaro beat Kevin Owens via DQ when Miz interfered. Post-match here, Cesaro gets... Double teamed, no homo, until Sami Zayn runs in for the save. And there was a visual there when Sami Zayn looked down at the Intercontinental title, picked it up. This is, what, this is one of the very, very few moments the crowd actually woke up. He picked up the IC title, held it, and everybody was doing the yes fucking shit, man. Brought back a tear to everybody's eye, man, and remembered Daniel Bryan. Great fucking moment. Great sight to see Sami Zayn holding the Intercontinental Championship. Dean, Dean Ambrose was in the back, and he was proclaiming that Stephen McMahon was smiling in a very fake manner. Dean Ambrose saying Stephanie um, will be a guest on the Ambrose Asylum. Okay. I'm supposed to be excited about that? Sure. Then we got a backstage segment with R-Truth, Tyler Breeze... Goldust, and Fandango. This is a new era though, right? You just came off a very, very good pay-per-view. And the first thing that we're seeing is an intercontinental lukewarm feud being showcased at the top of the hour. And then we go into a backstage segment in which R-Truth is trying to recruit Tyler Breeze for a tag team partner to name themselves Gorgeous Truth. I mean, didn't we just come off a pay-per-view? Why are we seeing this on television? And I tweeted this out. Why am I? Why is this on my TV? Who gives a shit about our truth? At this point, who gives a shit about Tyler Breeze? I mean, I want the fucking guy to succeed, but sticking him with our truth 
and putting him in a match with Goldust on Monday Night Raw that ended in less than two minutes is not what I want to see. Not really the definition of a new era, if you ask me, people. Tyler Breeze actually ends up winning, surprisingly. Is this, is this his first win of the year? I, I Probably. I, I'm not even sure, man. I don't have a fucking record in front of me. But this might very well be his first win on television. So, I don't know. Well, in the last 50 matches, at least, I believe he was winless in 2016. Go figure. Guy was a fucking centerpiece for NXT. Comes up to Monday Night Raw, and he's trying to be recruited by R-Truth for gorgeous truth with fucking Fandango fucking gyrating next to him. What are we in? Fucking uh, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey? What the fuck is going on? Monday Night Raw. New era. This is the fucking first Raw of the new era. Yeah, great. Goon era. Remember that. New Day comes out. Enzo, as you guys know, released from the hospital. He is taken off all WWE live events up until May 20th, I believe, or somewhere around there. All other tests came back negative. He will be back. Okay. Dudley Boys, Ford Villains, Colin Cassidy come out. They all proclaim that they want a shot at the tag team championships. You guys know the deal about that. And obviously, you guys were quicker than I was. This all led to a fucking four-on-four. Another four-on-four match, man. I don't know if Shane McMahon had anything to do with this Raw. Certainly didn't feel like it. The other Raws that we've seen, it felt like Shane had some some type of input. It just felt like Vince McMahon was all over this Monday Night Raw. When was the last time we seen a four-on-four match on Monday Night Raw? Not lately. Tonight we've seen a four-on-four match on Raw. New era, though, right? Yeah. Continue saying it, Cole. New era. Goon era. New day, Colin Cassidy beat the Dudleys and the Vaude Villains. 14 minutes. I mean, it wasn't a bad match, but nothing for me to fucking ride home about. Why should I be excited? I don't care. It's tough to, it's really just tough to watch an eight-man tag and be emotionally invested in what's going on. You know? I'm so over the eight-man tags and the six-man tags. Move on. Jesus fucking Christ. Just a lame way to get everybody on the fucking show. Emma versus Becky Lynch. Something that I actually enjoyed, even though it did went, uh, even, even though it did only go five minutes. Emma beats Becky with a Michinoku driver. And uh, Emma wins here by a referee distraction. They were trying to, uh, the referee was trying to break up the women. Emma was on the, on the apron on the outside, and, and, and uh, Becky was on the inside. Thumb to the eye. Emma comes back in the ring. Michinoku driver puts Becky away at 5 minutes and 45 seconds. I don't know what they're doing with these two women, but they're just kind of floating in the middle of nowhere right now. As long as we get good matches from both, I'm okay, you know. Becky Lynch is very vibrant, very lively, very exciting. Always a, f- always a pleasure to watch, always fun to watch. Emma, I really enjoy her in-ring work, you know. Two of the better women in the division. And like I said, the women's division is looking pretty damn good, especially with talent like Emma and Becky Lynch there. Got to utilize them more. That's the only thing WWE's got to do. They got to utilize them more. Greetings from Puerto Rico. Another fucking uh, Cologne Brothers promo. Please, send me to Puerto Rico. I need one after watching this fucking show. Battle Royal. This is where... (laughs) This is where things got really fucking outlandish and retarded. I tweeted out before this fucking match even took place, Apollo Crews needs to win this match. He needs to win it. Out of all the NXT talent that was brought up, Apollo Crews has just been in nothing important. Absolutely nothing. And to see Cruz go against Kalisto, I thought that would have been a fantastic match. Face versus face, two competitive guys fighting over the United States title. That's how you build a championship back up. That was the mentality of John Cena when he had the United States title. Before you know it, Apollo Cruz was eliminated. I'm like, okay, there goes my fucking pick. Right after that, 
Baron Corbin was eliminated. Okay, who gives a shit about this battle royal now? Really. After those two were eliminated, who fucking cares? This shit came down to Sheamus, Rusev, Del Rio, and Zack Ryder. Now, this is where things got a little fishy. And remember my story about the lady with the 67 fucking items and the 12 items or less line? People like that don't belong in public. They don't belong with other people. They don't deserve to leave their house. How, they lift, how, the, how they're allowed to leave their house is just fucking unbelievable. The people who tweeted me about Rusev and him being the right man to win this match, those people are very similar to the fucking lady with the 67 items. Let me tell you goons something. Okay? Zack Ryder. Everybody calling me a hypocrite. Oh, JD, you didn't like Zack Ryder when he won the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania, but now you want him to win the U.S. title. Let me tell you fucking idiots a little something, okay? Zack Ryder was never supposed to be in the Intercontinental title ladder match at WrestleMania. He was there simply as a last-minute replacement because Neville broke his fucking ankle. WWE... In the effort that they gave us at WrestleMania, he wanted to troll everybody. They used an excuse of, oh yeah, we wanted to give Zack Ryder a WrestleMania moment. Yeah, some WrestleMania fucking moment when you had him lose the title the next fucking night. What good is it? He lives five minutes of fucking fame and then loses it the next night on Monday Night Raw. I knew it was a bad decision then. He wasn't even supposed to be in the fucking match. Kevin Owens should have won that match. Kevin Owens should still be the Intercontinental Champion. Now we fast forward to Monday Night Raw tonight in this United States Battle Royal after Kalisto vanquished Ryback. And Ryback might have vanquished Ryback because apparently he was immediately fucking discharged from the arena. And this is a true story. Discharged from the arena because he had contract issues in negotiating with WWE again for a re-up on his contract. Maybe we should all send Ryback and get off my fucking TV t-shirt. He won't be on our TV anytime soon. He might actually fucking leave the company. Unbelievable. Prayers have been answered, people. So, we come to this battle royal, and I wanted Zack Ryder to win when it came down to the final four. I didn't see Sheamus winning. I didn't see Del Rio winning. I didn't even see Rusev winning. These guys were fucking garbage for the last four months. The League of Nations was a complete fucking disaster. Nobody cared about them. Nobody took them seriously. Why they were even fucking put together was just unbelievable to me. They were put together to get Roman Reigns over. And they failed at that. So, they ended up failing at that and ended up quickly becoming failures as a fucking stable. Why anybody from that stable would do anything of importance, it's, it's humanly impossible for that to happen. So when it came down to Rusev and Zack Ryder, I'm laying on my fucking couch and I'm like, okay... Let me see if WWE makes the right decision here. Crowd going crazy. You can tell the St. Louis crowd who is fucking comatose up until this point wanted Zack Ryder to win this match. They were ready to fucking explode for, an exa for a Zack Ryder US title battle royal win here. Okay? They wanted him to become the number one contender. Next thing you know, Rusev is throwing Zack Ryder out, and Rusev is crowned the number one contender. Now, everybody's coming at me saying, oh, J.D., this is the right decision. Rusev needs to be built up as a dominant force. It was good to see Lana with Rusev. This is going to be great to build momentum back up. I'm looking at all these tweets come at me because I wanted Zack Ryder to fucking win a United States Battle Royal to become the number one contender. 
People are telling me, oh, face versus face won't work. I just got done telling you, Jim Ross says there are no faces and heels. What difference does it make? You were the same fucking people who wanted Apollo Crews to win it. Right? But Zack Ryder is, is, is a fucking problem. You would have been okay if Apollo Crews won it and went against Kalisto, but Zack Ryder, no. Correct? Hypocrites. Every fucking one of you that came to me and gave me a problem about Zack Ryder winning this fucking match. Let me tell you goons something. Rusev has been unimportant for a year and a half. Ever since he lost that United States title to Cena, the guy has done nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. He became a shriveling pussy. Feuds with Dolph Ziggler in which there were chihuahuas and fucking fish thrown in the middle of the ring. Guy did nothing. He was fucking lumped with the League of Nations. Nobody gave a shit about them. Please. You heard the League of Nations music hit. You're running right for the fucking concession stands and getting yourself a fucking $6 box of Cracker Jacks. Nobody cared. But now all of a sudden you guys care about Rusev. Oh, he needs to be built up. He needs to be built up. This is great. Rusev's gonna be a dominant heel, a dominant monster. That's not how you build a dominant monster, you thick-headed fucking goons. All because you put him in a championship match, you think people are gonna take Rusev credible again? You think they're gonna fucking take him serious again? That's not how you build a fucking monster. You out of your fucking minds? The title is fucking worthless. Rusev is worthless. If Rusev wins, he has a worthless title. If Zack Ryder won it, people would be behind Zack Ryder. The crowd would want to see Zack Ryder. Every time he came out with the title, it would be better to see Rusev, or it would be better to see, to see Zack Ryder come out with the title than Rusev, because people would care. You put it on Rusev, nobody's going to fucking care. The title does not make the champion. The champion, the guy is supposed to make the title. Rusev is not that guy. Zack Ryder would have been that guy. Because people legit care. People care. And if you guys need a point and a fucking example, Roman Reigns is the example. People don't give a fuck about Roman Reigns. The title does not make Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is supposed to make the title. And that's not happening. Zack Ryder would have been the right choice. How you build Rusev up as a dominant monster, it doesn't take a battle royal win and a match with fucking Kalisto. It's not the way it works. It takes months of dominance, months of wins to get momentum. The crowd needs to see Rusev winning and winning and winning. And then at that point, people would say, you know what, Rusev has been on a hot streak. He's been undefeated for the next three months or the last three months. Maybe he deserves a title shot. And then when he's granted a title shot, that's when you say, you know what, this guy's so fucking hot. He's got so much momentum on his side. He's going into this title match. I think he's going to win it. And then when he wins and he beats Kalisto for the title, then at that point, the wrestler is made. He's got momentum. And the title looks better because of it. But you're going to put the title on Rusev after what? A fucking battle royal win? And what did he do before that? A year and a half of being fucking obsolete. Get it through your fucking heads. Use your fucking brains. And use some fucking common sense. Zack Ryder was the right one to win this match. Apollo Crews before that was the right one to win this match. Because he needed something to do. Baron Corbin was the next in line. And he got eliminated. Zack Ryder was the right one, WWE fucked up, made the wrong decision, Rusev won it, now nobody's going to fucking care. Now everybody's on Rusev's bandwagon. Why? Why? Use your fucking heads. Exactly what I explained to you is the, is the way to build a credible fucking heel. A battle royal win and a fucking quick title match at Extreme Rules? Not gonna happen. Not gonna make me a believer. A lot more work to go into Rusev to gain all his credibility back after a year and a half of being obsolete. Give me a fucking break. I'm right, and most of you are wrong. That's all I gotta say about that. And then AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Usos, Roman Reigns. We discussed that at the opening. 
listen, I'm not going to explain to you anymore about what I think about this. We're just going to have to wait till Extreme Rules, man. WWE is going to continue to toy with us and play with us and just fucking linger on with this until Finn Balor debuts. Finn Balor, like I said, man, I've been saying it for a couple of weeks now. Finn Balor is going to be the wild card that turns this entire storyline upside down. He is going to be the one. When you see Balor and you see the demon and you hear that music, you know shit's about to fucking change. You know shit's about to pick up. That's all I got to say about that. This Monday Night Raw, give me a fucking break. New era? Absolutely no way, shape, or form anything close to a fucking new era. Same old shit for Monday Night Raw. Fucking sleep-inducing show with a terrible fucking crowd and a Raw after a pay-per-view that went absolutely nowhere. But that's what we get, and that's what WWE gets for booking a fucking second pay-per-view in the month of May. Rush, 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 let's get through payback. Rush, 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 let's get to Extreme Rules. Payback build was good, now we're rush, rush, rush to Extreme Rules. Everything we've seen is going to be rehashed at Extreme Rules with stipulations. That's exactly what I said on the review. So, in closing, Cesaro beat Kevin Owens via DQ. We're going to have a fatal four-way with The Miz, Cesaro, Zayn, and Kevin Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. Look forward to that. Tyler Breeze beat Goldust. Get off my fucking TV. Four-man, uh, eight-man tag here. New Day, Colin Cassidy versus the Dullies and the Vaude Villains. East River Crossing from Big Cass on Devon. Emma versus Becky Lynch. Michinoku Driver by Emma to beat Becky. Rusev wins the Battle Royal, which was the wrong fucking move. Zack Ryder should have won it. And AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows beat the Usos and Roman Reigns. Phenomenal forearm to Jimmy. That's your Monday Night Raw review. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. If not, go fuck yourself, man. What the fuck do I care? I'll be back with Off The Script, episode 116 on Friday. If you guys missed the iTunes Podbean podcast, that went up. Go check that out. Links and everything you guys need down in the description below. I'm out of here. I'm looking forward to sleep after this fucking Monday Night Raw, man. Monday Night Raw got half the job done, man. It made me sleepy. Now I'm going to close my eyes and drift off into fucking dreamland. So I'll see you guys on Friday for Off The Script. Until then, this is JD, and I'll see you guys on Friday for Off The Script. Talk to you later.